Qualifying for the United States Grand Prix is over and Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari takes pole position in what was one of the closest and most nail-biting qualifying sessions of the year. But what did we learn? Well, I'm going to be looking through the data and doing a data analysis from qualifying. Let's get into the video. As usual, I'll be talking about McLaren, Aston Martin, Ferrari, Mercedes and Red Bull a little bit later on, so stick around for that. Qualifying for the United States Grand Prix in Texas has taken place on a Friday because for the second race in a row, it is a sprint weekend. And this meant that the teams actually only had one practice session to get their cars set up for the circuit. And for teams bringing upgrades, this meant that they only had one hour to learn about how good or how bad their new parts actually are. One hour of practice also meant that the drivers did not have enough time to get rubber into the circuit and build up grip. And that meant that in qualifying, once again, there was a very large amount of circuit evolution. And to show this evolution, I've brought up all the times of Charles Leclerc from qualifying. With this, you can see how much lap times improved from the beginning of Q1 to the end of Q3. The lap times for Charles Leclerc improved by 1.9 seconds. This is not quite as aggressive as what we saw in Qatar. However, once again, it is a lot of circuit evolution. So let's now compare the first lap from the final lap in qualifying so we can see how the circuit evolved over the session. In red is the Q3 lap and in white is the first lap in Q1. So what can we see when we take a look at these two tracers? Well, what we can see is that the majority of the lap time is made up in the first two sections. And the first section is the S section where you've got all those S corners which get tighter and tighter. In Q3, Leclerc can carry significantly more speed and scrubs off less speed when compared to his first lap. The other section where you can see a notable difference is towards the end of the lap. This is the part of the track which is often compared to Turn 8 at Istanbul. Similar to the S section, Leclerc is able to carry a lot more speed in Q3 as the circuit grip has now come up. For Charles Leclerc, this is pole position for the Grand Prix. It will be interesting though to see what he can do in the sprint race as we will get a much better indication to see what he can actually do in the main Grand Prix on Sunday. As I mentioned, a few teams have brought upgrades to Texas, but the question is what teams in the midfield were looking good and what teams were not looking so strong. Well, one team that everyone was interested in seeing and hoping to see good things from was the Haas team. Haas have brought a major upgrade this weekend, and whilst it does look impressive, the lack of track time has probably hurt them so far because they've not been able to maximise their potential. The upgrades are looking to solve some of Haas's main issues, which is rear tyre wear for the main Grand Prix. But their qualifying has not been as strong as Hulkenberg is lining up in P16 and Magnussen is P14. Let's now compare Magnussen's lap from Q2, which put him in 14th place, and compare that to the driver who was in P10 in Q2, which was Sergio Perez in the Red Bull. For Magnussen, he is actually very impressive early on, and he was faster through the S section in the early part of the lap. He was also faster through the tight and technical parts of the circuit at the end of the long back straight. And for a while, he was very comparable to Sergio Perez. However, Magnussen lost all of his time on the exit of the final corner, as Perez was able to get to full throttle faster, and this is what really cost it for K-Mag. It is going to be interesting to follow the Haas team in the sprint race. In the sprint race, we will get a much better indication as to whether or not these upgrades have helped them solve their tyre wear issues. Haas may have disappointed, but one midfield team that had a great day and looked like they were in a position to upset the top teams was Alpine. Alpine has had a fantastic day as Gasly is lining up in 7th place and Ocon is in 8th place. This for them is an incredible result, especially when you consider that at times they were set in purple sectors. The crazy thing is Gasly was just a tenth of a second away from lining up in 4th place on the grid. So let's take a look and compare the times of Sainz who is in P4 to Gasly in P7. As you can see looking at these two times, they generate near identical laps in two very different ways. Gasly is strong in the S corners and his descent in speed as they get tighter is a lot smoother than Carlos Sainz. Sainz is faster down the main straight which is something we should have expected because typically Ferrari has an efficient car but also this weekend Ferrari is running lower downforce which should give them more straight line speed performance. On the exit of the long straight and through the tight section of the corners, 
is where Gassi loses out even more as Ferrari has superior traction even though they have less downforce and this allows Sainz to get to full throttle sooner and that's because Ferrari has a better balance overall compared to the Alpine team. This was incredibly tight overall and Alpine this weekend can score some good points which is important as they will be looking to impress their new investors. I just want to say that if you are enjoying the video then I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. I'm on my way to 5k subs and I would really appreciate it if you help me get there. Now though, let's get back to the video and let's talk about the top 5 teams and let's start with McLaren. For McLaren, Lando Norris narrowly missed out on pole position, but he will be lining up P2 on the grid for Sunday's race, which is something that he can be very happy with. Unfortunately for his teammate Piastri, he could not hook a lap up in Q3. Let's compare the two times between Piastri and Norris. I am going to be saving Norris and Leclerc for a little bit later on, so stick around for that. When you look at these lap times, it starts off very even between the two drivers. However, coming onto the long back straight, Norris gets better traction on the exit, which means that he carries that advantage all the way down the long back straight as he picks up speed faster. Then at the tight corners, Norris is able to once again get better traction and better exits. This could be down to his extra experience at the circuit when compared to Piastri. For Oscar, he just did not really have the track time to learn the circuit and figure out the bumps on the Cota track. In the race on Sunday, it will be very interesting to see what Norris does. Typically, the driver starting in P2 has a great chance to take the lead as they have the inside line for the tight hairpin at Turn 1. Norris just needs to make sure he maximises his launch off the line and he could potentially take the lead over the Grand Prix. For Aston Martin, their continued downward spiral continues as the upgrades that they've brought to the circuit has not led to any success, as Fernando Alonso and Lance Stroll were both eliminated in the first part of qualifying, which is shocking when you look at how they were at the beginning of the season. The fall of Aston Martin seems to get steeper and steeper with each passing weekend, as this has been the hardest weekend yet for the team. The new upgrades have not offered up any advantage, and they probably didn't have enough time to learn about the new changes. Let's look at the times of Stroll and compare it to Bottas from Q1. I would have used Fernando Alonso's time, however the data that was provided is a little bit glitched. Here you see Stroll very early on is lifting off going into the S section, which I did not really see from many other drivers. This tells me that Stroll is really lacking any confidence in the car, which is not something you would have expected based on earlier in the season. Aston Martin was a downforce king, however here, you can see they just have no pace in the S corners and they're really struggling against an Alfa Romeo. In the Grand Prix on Sunday, I think Aston Martin will be really struggling for points and I think this might be the last time that they are in 4th place in the Constructors Championship for this season. For Ferrari, they are once again at the front and on pole position with Charles Leclerc. Leclerc is able to throw the Ferrari into corners and it is just about able to stick. He was not entirely planted to the circuit, but he was fast. Carlos Sainz is lining up in P4, which is impressive, especially because Sainz typically does not like the car when it is as loose compared to Charles Leclerc. Let's now take a look at the lap times of Charles Leclerc and compare it to the McLaren of Lando Norris. Looking at these laps, Norris is just about there with Leclerc through the S section. However, as it begins to tighten up, Leclerc is carrying just a little bit more speed. This speed was definitely the limit of the car, and Leclerc was close to being over the limit, which we do typically see from him when it comes to qualifying. Leclerc also gets a stronger exit onto the long back straight. However, in the tight corners, Norris in the McLaren starts to claw back some of the time, and especially going into the penultimate corner, Leclerc doesn't carry anywhere near the speed of the McLaren. But Leclerc makes up for it with a strong exit to secure pole position. I don't think Leclerc will have the race pace in the McLaren, and I fear tyre wear could be an issue. However, it was great to see him on pole position once again. The pace is there over one lap, but will it be there over a stint? That we will just have to wait and see from the sprint race. For Mercedes, qualifying today felt like a bit of a missed opportunity for Lewis Hamilton. In the first two sessions, and also in practice, it looked like Lewis Hamilton was in a position to take pole position, and have a strong race car, as the new floor definitely seems to be working for them, at least right now. 
However, it was not to be as the final lap was a little bit scruffy by Lewis Hamilton and because of that, he is now starting the race from third place instead of on pole position. Let's now look at the times of Hamilton and Leclerc. As you can see here, Mercedes has gone for higher downforce or maybe more it's just Ferrari's gone for lower downforce as Ferrari and Leclerc are maximizing their straight line speed efficiency by reducing that downforce. And by the looks of this, this is making Leclerc somewhat strong through the S section and down the back straight, albeit he is a bit loose. Hamilton though, with the downforce, can break later into turn one and get a better exit, which will be crucial for Sunday's race. In the final couple of corners as well, you can see that Hamilton can claw back the time on Charles Leclerc, which you would expect with more downforce. Going into the race on Sunday, Mercedes can be confident that they can take the fight to Verstappen behind. The car is typically stronger in race trim, and this was a genuine opportunity for pole position for them. And finally, for Red Bull, by their standards, qualifying was a bit of a disaster, as Verstappen is in P6 and Sergio Perez is down in P9. Verstappen threw everything at his final lap, and it was just faster than Leclerc. However, he went over track limits, which is why he was able to carry so much more speed, as you can see when you look at his fastest lap time, which didn't really count for Verstappen. He was down all the way on Leclerc until the track limits violation, where he carried over 30 kilometers per hour more than Leclerc into the corner. For his actual Q3 lap, which you can see here, Verstappen is still able to carry a lot more speed in the S corners than Leclerc, and this is because Red Bull has a little bit more downforce. Down the long straights, however, you can see that Leclerc has a straight line speed advantage, which you would expect with Ferrari running reduced downforce. And through the final couple of corners, Max still carries some insane speed when compared to Charles Leclerc. But it is not quite enough, and Verstappen will have a lot of work to do in Sunday's race. Thankfully though, for Red Bull, their main pace is in race trim, and I anticipate that with high tyre wear, they will have brilliant pace and be clear of a lot of cars ahead of them. The main exception though, will be Lewis Hamilton, and it will be interesting to see how Red Bull gets on against the Mercedes car. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, as always, comment, leave a like, and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.